Here on a beautiful San Diego morning, I have the opportunity to join on the work site, the construction site actually, inside the world of structural engineers as they go about overseeing a building construction which is uh, nearing completion and has enough exposed elements that we can actually view the inside of how it's being put together. So as we arrive here today, first visiting with a guy that put this together, Ryan Turner. Good morning. Hi, Good Steve. to see you. You too. And Casey Whitson. That's right. Hi, Steve. Welcome. Hi. Now, this is commando video, so if the camera sweeps by you, please know I'm, I'm improvising as we go. <laughs> but I have to tell you, it's great to be here. I know I've talked on the phone a number of times with Ryan Turner, and both of you guys are kind enough to give me an opportunity to go behind the scenes and talk about not only the career you're in, but kind of demystify what is actually the building construction that we're seeing here. So everything is specified right here. What That's are we looking right. at? So we have a concrete structure and there's different components to the drawings. What we start out with, and the simplest part of the structure to look at, is the plan. Where will we start in a plan that represents what we're looking at? I'd love to, it would be great, I think people would appreciate it. Right. Can we look at something that we can see, you know, on the plan? Right and then go out, walk out and see well, what you're doing. The major way that we convey the information that we want the contractor to, uh, to use to build the, or build the building is through our structural plan. So this is like a, a contract between a lawyer and a, and a business where this is our contract that we handed them and they oh, have wait. to build the building per our plan. Oh, you're saying this is a visual indication of exactly the agreement between you and the building. That's absolutely right. Okay. So cool. we go through a long So design. it's more than a recommendation. It's a mandate. It's a mandate. Okay. We go through a long design process. There's um, usually a building department that has to approve our plans. Okay. Um, so the con so the contractor is legally bound to build the building for our plan. Okay. On balance, if they have something you direct them to do that's silly, you have to stand protecting that decision. That's right. Okay. Well, there are there are cases where there's no. And I don't mean to make fun of your work, but I'm just saying if they if, if later on something falls down, they have to be able to say you exactly. told us to do it. Well, and okay. that and that's a good question. There's always cases where nothing's perfect, no drawing is perfect, and that's why I make myself available to come out to the site troubleshoot issues and, and holes that might have been in the drawings. Okay. Um, they have the opportunity to ask questions throughout the construction process All if right. there's anything that's unclear. Yeah, because you're not doing a paint by numbers design here. You're making original construction most of the time. Exactly. Yes. And you're, everything, okay. especially in concrete construction, yeah. everything out here is originally sized All right. and uh, originally formed. Okay. Now, I must tell you as we go to the plan, and I'll look forward to going back to bring my magnifying glass to go in for a close-up view, and this camera can capture some of the close images. Every time I go in a cement building in California or a cement parking structure, I told Ryan this. You know, I said, Ryan, when I go drive into one of those shopping malls and I go up to the third floor and the fourth floor and I'm thinking about the construction, I'm thinking, this is the state of the San Andreas Fault. We shouldn't even be using cement. Uh -huh. That's my thought. Uh -huh. But I realize guys like you are able to say, well, you know, yes and no. Cement can be used with uh, careful engineering uh -huh. that gives it more rigidity or flexibility than you might understand. Uh -huh. So what I'd like to ask, show me on the plan something that would represent a example of how are you taking this, this what looks like simply cement and designing some kind of a junction or lateral structural support or something like that. Is that fair? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, to address your question in two parts, first part is that... Um, we, we call it concrete. Okay, uh, so I need to be corrected to know we're talking concrete. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I being enlightened here? I've always called it cement, and you're saying, buddy, it's like talking about a cake made of flour. you got other ingredients. That's exactly it. Okay, it's, so hey, I'm getting it. This is an educational video, after all. It's okay. a complex recipe, and the only reason that's important is because the recipe really matters. Okay. The, uh, the percentage of cement versus the percentage of, of aggregate versus the percentage of... When you say of, aggregate, Got some okay. aggregate in his hands right here. Okay. Perfect example. So aggregate is sort of a collection of materials that are miscellaneous, earth, rock, stone. Really the thing we're looking for is aggregate. Is it takes up a lot of volume. Wait, can of I the... see that again? I'm just kidding. You can file it. <laughs> <laughs> it takes up a lot of volume of the concrete. Yeah. yeah. And what it does is is we want a what's called a well graded aggregate. So we want a lot of different sizes. And actually I'll, I will pick it up. It's a good example. You can see that we have a lot of different sizes in the aggregate here. Okay. Right? We have some larger pieces. We have some smaller pieces. But what that does is when we put it all together, those pieces all fit closely together, which means that we get a uniform distribution of the cement or the glue so, throughout the concrete. So let me get this straight. Yeah. 
we're talking about a handful of rocks. Yes. You're saying that we actually specify we want a certain blend, a certain mix of Absolutely. rocks? Absolutely. In fact, we very tightly control what that uh, what that recipe and what that specification is so to make me, sure we get the right performance. Let me have fun with this for a minute. Are there people that specialize in creating aggregate? There are. There okay. are, actually. Yeah, we have a couple of, uh, of concrete plants around San Diego here. You can see one of these guys backing in. Yeah. He's, co he's from a concrete plant called Vulcan. You can see it on yeah. the side of his truck. Right. Vulcan's one of our major suppliers of concrete, and right. they are specialists in concrete. So they can specify that we will mix half inch, quarter inch, eighth inch stone. Absolutely. You can actually know. Absolutely. Okay. So they could have a conceivable, you could specify we want nothing smaller than a half inch size. That's right. Okay, so That's you right. might modify not only to brew the composition by the mix of elements, but the type of elements. That's absolutely right. In okay. fact, we do tightly control usually not the minimum size, but the maximum size. Okay. Because if you look up here, you can see one of our column cages, the yeah. rebar sticking up out of that column cage. Right. All of a sudden, you could create voids and spaces inside of your concrete as you're, you're saying when you're working with a structured shape it will only accommodate a certain size aggregate. That's right, okay. absolutely. So I'm starting to get my concrete vocabulary down. You got well, it. Well, um, Casey, now that we've talked a bit about the aggregate and the yeah. concrete, let's get more specific and go to the plan. Sure. Okay, so I'm kidding, of course, but I'm starting to get the vocabulary. So we got, we're talking concrete, and now you're, you're in the forming of the concrete inside these structures. Is that right, Ryan? That's correct. And uh, concrete is just a small portion of it. It's up to the engineers to make sure that we uh, design the the materials to behave in their most uh, suitable way. So we add elements such as this, the reinforcing steel uh, referred to as rebar. Is that actually steel? That is actually, yes, it's a reinforcing steel called okay. rebar. Okay. And it's flexible. Looks like it licorice, is. always when I see it. It's like, you know, <laughs> licorice for the giants. It does know? look like li licorice. Yeah. The reason it actually looks like licorice is because these reinforcing steel bars... Okay, let's look at it real close. So what? This down here, the, exactly. these, it's neural, or not neural, but it's formed. Yeah, actually there's ridges along the length of the bar, and that allows the concrete to actually grip the bars. So as these bars are trying to, or as force is induced in these bars while they're inside the concrete, they won't pull straight out of the bars if they were smooth. And if the aggregate were too big, or the, or the concrete didn't form around those fine notches, right? That would be another factor. You want the you want your concrete to be able to form tightly around the rebar. That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly okay. right. Thank you. So then where do we go next? Why don't we take a quick look at the plan? Okay. So as we were alluding to earlier, in California we pay a lot of attention to earthquake design. Okay. Um, the major component in this particular building that's gonna give us resistance to uh, to an earthquake if it happens to come along are called shear walls. Okay. Uh, and in fact, you can see right behind me, there's a wall of, of concrete sticking right up out of the foundation here. Right, right. That's one of our elements of the building that's going to help keep the building from tipping over in an earthquake. You mean uh, now later, like moving this way? Moving laterally, okay. exactly. So, so that's, a, that's, that's not there as a support for up, for up and down, it's, it's actually a lateral support. It's actually serving two functions. Okay. So for, you know, 99% of the building's life, it's just going to serve as a vertical support and hold the hold the uh, elevated slabs up. Right. But if we happen to have an earthquake come along, you know, it might get enlisted yeah. to, to resist those lateral forces yeah. as the earthquake tries to push the building over. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, so where we go with an example of something on, on the on the plan that would be a reality we, walk, we can walk to. Right. So let's look at that exact, uh, exact spot that we were looking at behind me. So on the plans, we're looking at a bird's eye view right of the right. building. We're actually standing right about here right now. Okay. So, so what like we're that. looking at is this big rectangle here is the what's called a mat foundation. Okay. And that we're looking at the top of that foundation okay. sticking right out of the ground right okay. now. So this is this is not the bottom. This is the second floor. The, this is the bottom uh, story of this wing. Okay. But it is the second floor of the building. Okay. Got so, it. but this is the portion of the building that's in contact with the soil. Okay. Now I see. I see the the, the what you call that wall? So we would call it a shear wall. That's a shear wall. A shear wall. Now that exactly. shear wall appears to be integrated into into some uh, square or rectangular structural elements. Sure. Which are those? So these are graphics actually showing some additional reinforcement that we require to be put in the mat foundation. So okay. we're not going to be able to look at those because they're buried inside of the concrete at this point. Is that then a 
composition of the rebar or the type of uh, concrete that's been employed. It's actually uh, some tighter spacing on the rebar. It's what's called more uh, dense. Then it's more like dense. like 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 a fabric being more uh, tightly exactly. woven. Exactly. Okay. In fact, if we flip the page over here, we can actually see what the rebar is inside of the uh, inside of the mat foundation. Okay. So we're looking at the same view. It's just simplified with a rebar on here. So what we're looking at right now is we're looking at the plan view, so it's a bird's eye view of the and map we're, right, we're really right here. We're really right here. As, as we stand to look at this. Exactly. Okay. All right. And so what you can see here, the small lines here are showing areas where we have rebar, so those are the long steel bars actually put in the mat foundation. You mean those those uh, diagonal lines? Or? The diagonal lines are, are the area that we were just talking about okay. with, the, with the increased density of bars. Now, where, do, where does the construction company get a plan for how to lay the rebar? They actually use our plan. But is there another design, or do they just throw them in there in a pile? I mean, <laughs> they got, you know, I mean, you say to me as a, construct, a construction contractor, right. don't forget, put extra rebar in there. I can say, hey, Jack, grab a couple of handfuls of rebar. How do they have a plan for how to, how to lay the rebar in place? So we actually specifically note on the drawings how long the bar needs to be, what spacing it needs to be at, and we provide them dimensions okay. from one side of the building to the next, right. showing, okay, specifically, this is where we like want these. six inches apart, ten bars. Exactly. A typical on. way to say it would be to say, we want a number five rebar. A number five is just the size of the bar. The, it's actually noting... Okay. Maybe we can find another place to do this interview. That's right, that's right, that's right. All right, all right. <laughs> well, I'm learning about what they're doing, and in the meantime, I'm realizing why safety is such a concern, not only for the safety goggles, which aren't going to save me if something falls on my head, but the idea of just being aware of your environment. Now, as you can see, we're walking into the space where they are in mid-construction, and of course, there we'll take a look at that, uh, what's called the uh, shear wall. Shear wall, right? Shear wall? This is a shear wall, okay. So it's, uh, this then is a support from the one floor to the next floor, but also it provides that, that motion uh, resistance for the building to prevent it from collapsing. Okay. The one thing I wanted to look at and show you here is actually the, the elevation view. We don't just provide plan views of the walls. We actually also provide elevation views okay. of the walls. So, here we're looking at that same shear wall that we have standing right in front of us, right. as if we were looking at the face of the wall. Um, and you can see we're pointing out vertical reinforcement for them. We've got the mat foundation that we're standing on top of right, right now. This is the foundation we're standing on okay. top of. Got it. We have bars that are sticking out of the Is foundation. Is that an actual rebar? Please.